there was the rumor that while filming Blade Trinity, which mm -hmm. is, you know, Blade Part 3, yeah. that uh, Wesley Snipes ended up choking the director. There will be, if you do your homework, you'll discover that what they said happened mm -hmm. didn't really happen that way. Okay. And how it was set up mm -hmm. was designed for certain reasons. Uh, I didn't feel that was where our people needed to be at. And we had enough images of us being dealers and, you know, unhumanly. Mm -hmm. I wasn't one, I didn't want to. So it seems like a bunch of celebrities are fed up with the BS in Hollywood. Take Wesley Snipes, for example. Back in the heyday, he was like the king of the castle, pulling in almost a cool $10 million per movie. But somewhere along the line, things took a nosedive for the actor. Directors stopped knocking on his door, studios seemed to forget his number, and his co-stars weren't exactly singing his praises in interviews. It seemed like Wesley had gone from hero to zero real quick. But hold up, Snipes isn't taking the blame lying down. According to him, his career crash was wasn't on him. It was on them. Hollywood, that is. Snipes claims he got the b simply because he rubbed some folks the wrong way. And guess what? He's not alone in feeling this way. Many black actors in the b share his b So what's the real deal here? Was Wesley Snipes really put on the Hollywood blacklist? And if so, what's the tea behind it? Let's dive in. I mean, that goes back to the 1800s, right? Early 19th century. It's been an issue in this country since the beginning. So Wesley Snipes was no stranger to the limelight, especially after he nailed the role of Willie Mays Hayes in that epic baseball flick, Major League. After that, he was practically on fire in Hollywood, scoring gigs left, right and center think passenger 57 inches and white men can't jump. But apparently not everyone was rooting for him to hit the big leagues. Just when he was on the rise, Snipes found himself in a sticky situation that wasn't his doing. Back in 1991, the actor was cruising down the road of Los Angeles when he was stopped by the police and ordered to lie face down on the pavement. The officers handcuffed him while one kneeled on his head as he pointed a handgun at the actor's head. Meanwhile, Wesley was trying to make sense of the whole situation. He had no idea what was happening, and what's worse is that the officers weren't gracing him with an answer. It's not like he was speeding. Interestingly, when the dust settled, it turns out, he'd borrowed a sleek Mustang to get home from set that night, but someone on the crew didn't get the memo and reported it stolen. And that's how Wesley ended up in cuffs, courtesy of a major mix-up. You bet Wesley wasn't a happy camper after the ordeal. While talking about the incident after he was released, Wesley described the entire experience as incredibly humiliating. He accused the police of racial discrimination. That said, some folks think that the entire thing might have been orchestrated to land Wesley in trouble. Though the allegations were never proved, Snipes had gotten a taste of the industry, experience that will come in handy down in line. You see, throughout his cheer, Wesley has had his fair share of troubles. Fast forward to 2005, and he's making headlines again, but this time it's for suing New Line Cinema and director David S. Goyer. You see, they teamed up on Blade Trinity, which should have been Wesley's crowning glory, but it turned into a total nightmare instead. I had it, thought I had it locked in there, Jimmy. Yeah. And then it is. I came up with a big L. Wesley had some serious f with Goyer and wasn't keen on teaming up with him from the get-go. But lo and behold, six weeks before shooting was set to start, there he was, on set. That was a breach of contract, and Wesley wasn't about to let that slide. Plus, to add insult to injury, he wasn't feeling the script one bit. But did anyone listen? No. Goyer just plowed ahead with it. And get this, Wesley felt like the supporting white characters were hogging all the spotlight like they were trying to snatch the Blade franchise right out from under him. But it gets worse. Wesley claimed Goyer was spouting off racist remarks about him and dissing his professionalism left and right. And to top it all off, there was this crew member sporting a racist tee on set, and Goyer didn't lift a finger about it. All in all, it was a toxic work environment, and Wesley was stuck dealing with all that nonsense. Michael Jai White, a close friend of Snipes who had a chance to visit the set during production, backed up his claims, saying, I remember coming to the set to visit. I think it was a combination of frustrations. Think about that Blade Trinity. Damn it, do you you realize what was happening? They basically were trying to take Blade away from him, blatantly. And White even pointed fans to the movie posters for the tea. Apparently, they held some clues about what was really going down. They're trying to take the movie away from him and say, this is Blade now. But as the drama played out for all to see, fans weren't holding back. They were quick to throw shade at the studio for messing with a legend like Snipes. But New Line Cinema wasn't about to take that lying down. They fired back, spreading rumors about Snipes being a total nightmare to work with on set. And then you've got comedian Patton Oswalt spilling the beans about the tension between Snipes and the director. <laughs> with all the craziness that went down, we were in Vancouver and Wesley Snipes was going crazy and he wouldn't 
come out of his trailer. Word on the street is, Wesley wasn't pulling any punches when it came to his with Goyer. He straight up asked the guy to bounce from the movie multiple times, and things got so tense that Wesley supposedly resorted to only communicating with him via sticky notes. And then there were these rumors swirling around about Wesley getting allegedly putting his hands on the director. He resorted to give, he would communicate with, with uh, post-its that he would give to the director. However, in an interview with The Guardian, Snipes shut down the allegations. He said, let me tell you one thing. If I had tried to strangle David Goyer, you probably wouldn't be talking to me right now. A black guy with muscles strangling the director of a movie is going to jail. I guarantee you. He continued saying, this is part of the challenges that we as African American face here in America. These microaggressions. The presumption that one white guy can make a statement and that statement stands as true. Why would people believe his version is true? Because they are pre predisposed to believe the black guy is always the problem. You can bet when stuff like that gets out, nobody's lining up to work with you. In Hollywood, your reputation is gold. And Wesley's took a serious hit. It's like his name was mud, and no one wanted to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Of course, when you when you are focused on quality, yes, and you're working with people who don't have your pedigree or don't have your skill set, mm. of course they're going to call you difficult. But this hardly marks the last time Wesley would heads with the top Back in 2019, Warner Bros. made a lot of folks happy by announcing the reboot of the 90s action movie, New Jack City, a title that had feathered Wesley's career back in the day. The actor played the iconic role of New York pin, Nino Brown. Given the success Wesley had achieved with the first film, you'd expect the actor to drop everything and sign the contract for the reboot. But that's not what happened. In fact, much to fans' shock, Wesley wanted nothing to do with the film. During an interview promoting his new film, Dolomite Is My Name, Snipes Claire I am not associated with it. I have nothing to do with it at all. I told them no. If I had a dime for every time I've said no, it's a done deal. It's a wrap. As for his reason for saying no, he spilled the tea, saying, I think some things should be left alone, if it worked at the time under the circumstances, and the story was built around things that are current. I don't particularly like the idea of recreating the culture. For what? To put it simply, Wesley straight up said no thanks to the new Jack City reboot, because he felt it was throwing black actors under the bus with negative stereotypes. Uh, I didn't feel that was where our people needed to be at. And we had enough images of us being <laughs> dealers and, you know, <laughs> unhumanly. Mm -hmm. I wasn't one, I didn't want to contribute to. Can't blame him for sticking to his right? But you can bet his refusal didn't sit well with the higher-ups who were all gung-ho about the reboot. That said, Wesley's not the only one who's been given the cold shoulder in Hollywood over some petty stuff like this. Let's start with Monique. The thing is, Monique has spent over a decade calling out Lee Daniels, OPR Winfrey, and Tyler Perry, claiming they worked together to blackball her for not doing promotional press for the 2009 film Precious. The real kicked off when OPR and Tyler decided Monique should hit the press circuit for the film without any paycheck. Monique wasn't having it and straight up said, nah, not in my contract. According to Monique, she only got a measly 50k for the whole movie, which was barely enough. Now they wanted her to jet around the world promoting the film for free? Not on Monique's watch. But Oprah and Tyler didn't take her refusal well at all. Instead, they started trashing her reputation in the industry, spinning a narrative about her being difficult to work with. Monique spilled the tea saying Tyler Perry told her, you may want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, your next film is six to eight million dollars. Monique was like, hold up, I'm a black woman. Where are they paying those salaries, brother? She straight up told Tyler, I can't work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I can't go overseas and do this for free. They're back and forth continued, with Tyler saying he doesn't believe in giving money away for free, and Monique firing back, I don't believe in working for free, so we on the same page? It's a classic case of clash in values. And Monique wasn't backing down. Says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we're on the same page. She also claimed Tyler Perry allegedly went the extra mile to mess with her acting gigs. According to Monique, it all went down after she turned down a request to fly to France for the Cannes Film Festival, tied to promoting the movie Precious. So, check it. The movie studio initially asked her to jet off to France, but Monique, with her busy schedule as a talk show host, comedian, and family woman, respectfully declined. They tried to sweeten the deal by offering to upgrade her hotel room, but she and her husband stuck to their guns, saying, nah, we're gonna spend this time with our family. When the third call came and they asked, what's it gonna take to get Monique to France? Her husband straight up asked, is there a number associated with it? That's when they dropped the bomb that they would never pay for anyone to do 
promotions for a movie. Monique revealed she was paid a mere $50,000 for Precious, and it wasn't about the money, she signed up to do it with her friend. The interviewer dug in, suggesting she needed the money to feed her family and pay bills, and Monique responded, I think that's what America says. We all say, I can't do it for free. She explained that when the movie studio refused to pay for her can's appearance, they didn't make a fuss. But then the report started flying. Monique as demanding and difficult. The whole thing boiled down to a simple request that they understood couldn't be met. But suddenly, Monique found herself labeled, and that's where the drama kicked in. Stood, because what people didn't know was, I was paid $50,000 to do the movie Precious. And it really wasn't about the money, and I'm not complaining, because I signed up to do it with my friend. Says we can't set a precedent and pay you to do this, we didn't have an issue with them, okay. but that's when the reports came that now Monique is being demanding and she's being difficult. Monique's even called out OPR and Tyler Perry, asking for an apology that, as far as we know, is still MIA. All right, next up on the list, we've got Stacey Dash. You might remember her from the 90s classic, Clueless, where she rocked the role of Dion. She was basically a household name back then. But hold on to your hats, because her journey in Hollywood took some wild turns. After her early fame, Stacey decided to shake things up big time. Instead of sticking to the usual Hollywood script, she took a detour into the world of political commentary. Yep, you heard that right. The girl from Clueless turned into a political commentator. And let me tell you, it wasn't just a career shift. It was like dropping a bomb in the middle of Tinseltown. Stacey went all in with her conservative views, especially when it came to giving Barack Obama a piece of her mind and taking stances on hot-button social issues. Now here's the kicker. Hollywood tends to lean left, but Stacey was out here swimming against the stream with her outspoken conservative beliefs. You can imagine the kind of storm that stirred up. Her appearances on news networks and social media rants turned into major talking points. I'm talking about heated debates, intense backlash, the whole shebang. In an industry where your personal beliefs can make or break you, Stacey Dash definitely didn't shy away from going against the grain. Her political stance didn't just put her on a different page. It practically put her at odds with a bunch of her peers and the whole Hollywood crew. You know, we're Americans, period. That's it. Are you saying there shouldn't be a Black History Month because there isn't a White History Month? Exactly. Now let's talk about the man, the myth, the legend, Will Smith. Now we all know his Hollywood journey is like a blockbuster movie in itself. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in the 90s? Absolute classic. Then he owned the big screen with Independence Day, Men in Black, you name it. Basically, the dude was on fire. But hold on to your seats because 2022 at the Academy Awards was a whole different plot twist. Picture this, live on TV, Will Smith goes full-on confrontation mode and slaps comedian Chris Rock on stage. Why? Well, Chris cracked a joke about Will's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Instant shockwaves and the whole world's jaws dropped. <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. The aftermath? Massive. Will faced a tidal wave of criticism for the slap, seen as uncool and a hit to his squeaky clean image. He even resigned from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and got banned from their events for a solid decade. The guy who's been the poster child of positivity suddenly found himself in the middle of a controversy that had everyone questioning his judgment and professionalism. Fast forward, he said sorry to Chris Rock, and some folks think bounce back just fine. I mean, it's Will Smith we're talking about. Now, unto Darius McCrary, you know, the guy who brought Eddie Winslow to life on the classic sitcom Family Matters. Back in the 90s, he was all the rage becoming a household name and securing his spot in American pop culture. But spoiler alert, life after Family Matters wasn't exactly a walk in the Hollywood park. So here's the deal, McCrary found himself in a bit of a typecasting maze. The whole Eddie Winslow thing was a blessing and a curse. While it made him a star, breaking out of that mold proved trickier than a Rubik's Cube. Casting directors and fans alike couldn't unsee him as the Winslow kid, making it a challenge to land roles that showed off his full range. And you guessed it, this typecasting struggle is a classic Hollywood tale. Many actors grapple with breaking free from their iconic roles, and McCrary was no exception. Post Family Matters, he tried to mix things up, hopping into various TV and movie projects. But let's be real, none quite matched the Eddie Winslow fame. 
This whole journey shines a spotlight on a bigger issue, especially for those who hit the fame jackpot as kids. Navigating the transition to more grown-up roles is like trying to find your way out of a maze blindfolded. McCrary's story mirrors the challenges many actors face in evolving beyond their past characters. Fast forward to today, and McCrary's still in the game, taking on different roles and exploring other creative ventures. His resilience and dedication to his craft in the face of typecasting hurdles are like a Hollywood survival guide. So, Props to Darius McCrary for keeping it real in the wild ride of Tinseltown. And now let's roll out the red carpet for Halle Berry, the Hollywood trailblazer, with a story that's like a roller coaster, full of ups, downs, and a whole lot of groundbreaking moments. Remember when she snagged that historic Oscar for Best Actress in Ball back in 2002? Yeah, that was a game changer. She became the first black woman to grab that golden statue, flipping the script on Hollywood's diversity game. But hold on, life after the Oscar glow wasn't all glitter and gold for Barry. Despite her big win, finding roles that matched her talent and the significance of that Academy Award turned out to be trickier than navigating a maze blindfolded. It shone a spotlight on a bigger issue. The industry's struggle to offer substantial and nuanced roles for black actresses, even ones with proven chops and critical acclaim. It's like Hollywood was stuck in a diversity time warp. And, you know, Barry's post-Oscar journey had its share of bumps. Some film choices raised eyebrows, and her personal challenges played out on the public stage. Being in the spotlight isn't all glam. There's constant scrutiny and this unspoken pressure to keep proving yourself, no matter how many trophies are on your shelf. But here's where Halle Berry's true grit shines. Despite the hurdles, she stuck to her guns. Diverse roles? Check. Breaking free from the typecasting grip? Double check. And guess what? She even stepped into the director's chair with Bruised, proving she's not just an acting powerhouse but a force behind the scenes too. So, let's toast to Halle Berry for not just making history, but for weathering the Hollywood storms with style, resilience, and a whole lot of talent. Next up is Jussie Smollett, and man, it's a roller coaster ride in Hollywood. You probably remember him from Empire, where he played Jamal Lyon. Groundbreaking stuff, really. Being an openly gay black dude on TV, he was getting major props for breaking barriers and his acting chops. But hold up, the plot takes a wild turn. In January 2019, Jussie reported being the victim of a hate crime in Chicago. Now that made headlines real quick. At first, folks were rallying behind him, showing love and support. But then, the whole story started started looking fishy. Details started popping up suggesting that maybe, just maybe, he orchestrated the whole thing himself. And bam, the tide turned. Public opinion did a 180. And suddenly, Jussie went from victim to suspect. Media went nuts. And the dude faced some serious legal heat. We're talking a 16-count indictment for allegedly filing a false police report. The legal saga had more twists than a soap opera. Charges dropped, then reinstated with a new indictment. Are fined $25,000 which is the maximum fine, and you will spend the first 150 days of your sentence in the Cook County Jail, and that will start today. This whole mess not only put a dent in Jussie's personal rep, but also threw a massive question mark on his Hollywood future. Empire wrote him out of the final episodes, and his next moves in the industry became a big old question mark. Next up is Isaiah Washington. You know him from Grey's Anatomy, playing the suave doctor Preston Burke, a role that put him on the map as a top-notch performer. But buckle up, because his Hollywood ride gets bumpy real quick. There's this incident that totally flips the script on Washington's career vibe. It all kicks off when he drops a not-so-cool homophobic slur on the Grey's Anatomy set. Suddenly, it's the talk of the town, everyone's buzzing about it. And let me tell you, the industry, all gung-ho about inclusivity and being respectful, wasn't having it. They threw some serious shade at Washington, and the backlash was like a Hollywood storm. In 2007, when you left Grey's Anatomy, there was so much conversation around your departure because you had allegedly made a homophobic comment about your former co-star. The aftermath hit, and Grey's Anatomy slams the door on renewing Washington's contract. This whole episode becomes a real-life soap opera, highlighting the crazy dance between personal beliefs, public antics, and the gigs that make or break a career. Despite Washington owning up to his slip-up and giving a public apology, the incident becomes this looming cloud over his career. Fast-forward post-Grey's Anatomy and snagging roles of the same spotlight magnitude becomes a bit of a mission impossible for him. It's like the 
Hollywood gods decided to make him jump through hoops to reclaim his spot in the limelight. Next is Columbus Short, the guy who danced his way into our hearts and stomped the yard and kicked it as Harrison Wright on Scandal. I mean, the dude had charisma for days, and we were all thinking he's on the fast track to Hollywood greatness. But hold up, here comes the plot twist. Life off screen for Columbus Short turned into a wild drama. Reports of domestic issues and a bit of a substance use situation started making headlines. Suddenly, his personal life was overshadowing his red carpet moments. In 2014, he dropped the bomb, he was bouncing from Scandal, a show that was not only a fan favorite but also a critical and commercial hit. Leaving Scandal wasn't just saying goodbye to a steady paycheck, it was like waving farewell to a major platform that had him on Hollywood's radar. And you know how it goes, when the spotlight dims, it's tough to snag those sweet roles. Suddenly, the offers weren't pouring in like before, and his Hollywood presence started fading faster than last year's fashion trends. But don't hit pause just yet. Columbus Short, ever the comeback kid, decided to face the music. He took some time off to sort out his personal stuff and make a Hollywood comeback. Life's a journey, right? Let's see where Columbus's Hollywood story goes next. It is bittersweet, man. That is exactly the way to call it. I think it's bittersweet. But I did love what I did on Scandal, you know what I mean? And then there's Dave Chappelle, a tale of wit, controversy, and the resilience of a comedic genius. You probably know him from the legendary Chappelle show, right? The early 2000s comedy sketch series that was basically groundbreaking in its fearless take on race, culture, and politics. Humor mixed with raw honesty at its finest. But then, out of the blue, when the show was at its peak, Chappelle pulls a disappearing act. He jets off to Africa, leaving everyone scratching their heads. Why? Well, the pressure and ethical concerns about where the show was heading got to him. Hollywood was left hanging and fans were left wondering. Fast forward a few years and Dave makes a triumphant return. His stand-up game is still top-notch, proving his talent and appeal never faded. But you know how it goes. With great success comes great controversy. Dave's jokes about transgender folks and the LGBTQ plus community stir up some heat with accusations of insensitivity flying around. I know I've been gone for a very long time. And unbeknownst to you, it was a difficult 10 years. These controversies are like a spotlight on the shifting standards of comedy and the tug of war between creative freedom and social responsibility. Dave, being Dave, doesn't dodge the tough conversations. Nope, he tackles them head on in his stand up routines, unapologetically embracing the controversy. Some applaud him for his artistic integrity, while others call him out for perceived insensitivity. With many celebrities facing the consequences of being blackballed, it appears that more and more of them might follow in the footsteps of Monique and Wesley by sharing their own stories. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to share in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.